Hey rock stars, what's going on? Happy October, happy fourth quarter 2019. It is officially October 1st and I wanna welcome you guys into what the craziness is of fourth quarter. So I wanna talk a little bit about what can you expect during fourth quarter and what you should do, how you should plan. We talked about some of this the other day in a video about some of the things that you should be uh, kind of editing and altering and ways that you can fix your store and things that you probably have or maybe have not been doing all year that you can kind of tinker with and play with to increase sales. There's no better time than fourth quarter. Uh, you don't want to get crazy during fourth quarter and do something that'll get you in trouble, but you want to do stuff that you have a little bit more wiggle room, a little more risk for the reward because right now you'll have more rewards so that will kind of offset as much risk as possible so what should you expect during fourth quarter what is fourth quarter why is it fourth quarter why do, do things go the way that they go and and what is it if this is your first year selling or maybe you just started last fourth quarter and you didn't get a full experience uh tell me a little bit about it casey what is fourth quarter and why okay so fourth quarter obviously is the last three months of the year october november december for those of us here in the united states it is the highest trafficked and most spent shopping season. So the day after Thanksgiving, which now I guess isn't even Black Friday, but it used to be called Black Friday. And the reason that the day after Thanksgiving is called Black Friday is typically that is actually the first day of the year after all of those sales are tallied for major retailers and major businesses to report a profit. It means going into the black. Red means that you're negative, black means that you're even, and green would be a profit. And so that is the day that a lot of retailers pass over the black line into profit and so they call that black friday for that reason that's why retailers call it black friday um not to be confused with black tuesday from when the stock market crashed i think it was a black tuesday um so black friday is obviously uh the biggest shopping day when people are going to spend thousands of dollars on christmas gifts uh, and that's what helps bolster these stores into that section overall as we come into october and before that november black friday happens a lot of stores will um, typically start their sales, their Christmas holiday sales. You'll start seeing a lot of these promotions roll out in the first week of October. Now we still have Halloween to think about and a lot of stores are gonna to try to sell Halloween costumes and decorations, but the fall decorations, the pumpkins, the gourds, the Thanksgivings, um, the table runners, the furniture for your house, the Christmas trees, all this kind of stuff is gonna start showing up in stores and so this is when the push happens. This causes a lot of regular buyers like me and you to actually go out to stores, to retailers and start planning our Christmas shopping if you haven't already started to start spending money that we might otherwise not spend. And so that is how the holiday season, the Christmas season ends up getting kind of in full swing. And so the obvious answer for you as an online retailer, online seller, this is going to be a record year for online sales, is you want to have as much available inventory listed on as many platforms and as many categories as possible. Because right now people are starting to get that buying feeling, that, that fire lit under them, and they're going to start spending money. So I wanna talk about just a few things that you can do right now, today, this week, this weekend, to kind of get prepared for it. If you haven't already, some of this stuff, if you've been watching my videos, you should have done already. And if you're behind, it's never too late. You're just gonna to have to kick butt for the next couple of weeks and get it done. Okay, so number one is the obvious answer. You have to list everything that you have. If you have death piles, if you've been procrastinating and you've been putting them off, you have to get your death piles done. How is the best way to approach death piles? There's three things that you have to do if you're gonna conquer a death pile successfully. Number one is make a plan. Write down how many items you wanna list every single day. If it's 10, if it's 15, you know your skill set. Uh, and along with that, you should be increasing your listing speed if you're slow. If you're only listing two or three items an hour, you've gotta get that up, especially if you're clothing and shoes. If you're working on electronics and higher end and high dollar stuff that you gotta test and work on, maybe not so much. Okay, number one, make a plan, write it down, figure out how many items you're gonna uh, you know, get done. Number two is batch it. This goes along with making your plan, but you don't wanna to try to go all over the place and list an iPod and then list a t-shirt and then list a jacket and then you know being all over. Make a, a pile of t-shirts and get those done one day. That'll help you knock the pile out quicker because you'll be accomplishing things in batches and piles. So that's definitely something that uh, seems to work for a lot of people. And number three is kind of get yourself maybe an accountability partner, uh, get yourself an accountability group, join my group, 
whatever you need to do to keep yourself on track and accountable for what you do. Write the goals down, post them on social media. Don't worry about what other people say or think, just do it for yourself to hold yourself accountable. And so that's how you're gonna attack that death pile and get up as much inventory as possible. If you do not have a death pile, if you have no inventory or very little inventory to put up and you're ready to get more, this would be number two for fourth quarter and that would be to go out and stock up as much as you possibly can. Go out and get the inventory now. You don't wanna have a store with little or no items for sale when you've got buyers rolling through who may have bought items for you. Go out, get this stuff sourced, and then of course refer back to number one and get it all listed. So buying inventory is absolutely one of the best things you can do. Um, thrift it, estate sales, yard sales. Remember, a lot of people are gonna be selling stuff cheap and just trying to get rid of it because they need holiday Christmas money. Take advantage of that. One of the uh, things that I cover in my webinar about alternative sourcing methods outside of the thrift stores is ways to buy stuff from people locally and get it dirt cheap. Now is one of those times because they need Christmas money desperately. They need holiday money, especially in November and December. October, a little bit, but November, December for sure. And that gives you the opportunity to buy cheap stuff and get it up for sale during Christmas. It's a great way to do it. If you missed that webinar, it's going to be in one of the links down below that I'll talk to you about in just a second. Okay, so we're going to move to number three, and this goes along with inventory as well. If you have a bunch of stuff that's been up all year long and it's not selling, get rid of it. Try to move that junk out, blow it out, give people a deal, get them buying, just get that stuff rolling out the door. Put it on sale, give it free shipping, make it best offers, whatever you have to do to break even or get a dollar or two profit out of it. Uh, figure out where the shipping or the free shipping or the price needs to be, post it and go with it, man. Get that bad inventory out and replace it with good stuff so when people come shopping, they see all of your quality inventory. Okay, that's number three. Number four is pricing. Now this is important, guys. Listen to this very, very carefully. And I go over this during my training videos, uh, if you've ever gotten those. Pricing during fourth quarter changes pretty drastically on a lot of items. Some stuff doesn't, but a lot of stuff will. You have to go back and you have to check your prices, whether they've gone up and there's a bigger market because you don't want to lose and leave money on the table, or if things have kind of stayed where they are. It's also possible that a lot of competition rolls in during fourth quarter and you'll have to adjust prices accordingly for that. Pricing during fourth quarter will fluctuate. Also, do not buy inventory based on fourth quarter pricing. For example, I'll just use this shirt. If this shirt is worth $20 on any given day and I start seeing during fourth quarter that it's selling for 30 and $40, I don't wanna go out to a thrift store and buy it thinking that I'm gonna get 30 or 40. You have to assume that nothing is gonna sell and you're gonna be stuck with everything you have after fourth quarter when the prices come back down. So do not buy, especially if you're a retail arbitrager or online arbitrager or something like that where you're buying it like a, you know, a smaller margin, maybe you're paying 10 to sell it for um, you know, 20, 25 on a normal basis and now you're getting 35, 40, you're like, yeah, I can go and get them up for 15 or 20 now and buy them. No, because once the price comes back down, you'll kill yourself, you'll lose your butt on that. Uh, price accordingly and be very careful when you do that. So that's number four. Number five is one that you probably should have already done. Uh, I recommend this all days of the year, but fourth quarter, if you're gonna do it, be careful. It's called adding a platform and adding streams of income. Uh, if you're only an eBay seller, add Poshmark. If you're only a Poshmark seller, add eBay. Uh, if you've never sold hard goods or electronics or toys, try to add on Amazon. It's free to sell on Amazon. Uh, I'll try to put a link to the free sign up for Amazon down below. Um, you don't have to pay the $40 and you can start testing the waters. There are some restrictions on toys and games and such during fourth quarter, but a lot of other stuff is normally ungated and you can sell it at, per usual on Amazon, uh, even though it is Christmas. So there will be some restrictions. Don't let that get you down. Learn Amazon, sell a few things, start bringing in a couple hundred bucks and you'll be able to look back on fourth quarter and say, man, I made two or 300 bucks a month. I made an extra thousand dollars during fourth quarter just because I added Amazon to my streams of income. So adding another platform. If you have no idea what Amazon is, if you don't even know you could sell on Amazon or if you didn't know you could sell used versus new on Amazon, if you're not aware of all the myths about selling on Amazon, all the false um, information that people put out about being an Amazon seller or gating or ungating or product rankings. It's all covered in all the videos that I put out. Again, they'll be linked below. I'll go over it with you in a minute. Um, let's keep moving on. And uh, number what? One, two, three, four, five. Number six is adding different items. So this goes along, and I probably should have done this one first before platform, but adding new items. If you're content on the platforms you're on or you're already on multiple platforms, maybe it's a matter of adding new items and new categories. For example, if you're just a clothing seller, 
you should add shoes. Shoes have a good sell-through rate and typically a good profit margin if you're buying them properly and, and at a good price. So shoes can be something that you could add on during fourth quarter and start building an inventory of in order to have a higher sell-through rate and higher average sale price. Your clothes might be an $18, $20 sale price making you $9, $10 profit. Your shoes might be a $28 to $30 sale price making you $14 or $15. And so that kind of brings you up. Something really to think about. Um, maybe you sell shoes and clothes and you want to start selling toys or electronics or, or cameras or, or whatever it is that you want to sell. Adding new items in addition to adding new platforms, and that may go hand in hand depending on which ones you're on, absolutely a great way to add money for fourth quarter. Um, changing your policy. So a lot of you have been really, really against free returns uh, to earn top rated seller. You, maybe you're against free shipping, maybe you're against best offers. Things that you need to think about, pick one, pick two, pick all of them and really change it and give it a chance during fourth quarter. See what happens. If a week or two goes by and nothing changes, nothing changes. If your sales spike, awesome, you found something that works. If your sales start going down during fourth quarter, stop what you're doing and change again. Remember, one of the emails I get all the time, and this is, this is probably the most frustrating thing, is people say they're doing the same thing month after month after month after month. If something's not working, you have to change it. You have to add a new policy, take a policy away. You have to do something to make it work. Uh, when I do store reviews, when I do trainings, whatever it is, and I tell people what to do, I make a list for them. They have their own little profile that I save in my notes and my spreadsheets or whatever we're working on. And, uh, and I put down what I suggest for them to do where I'm like, look, these are the four or five things that I really think you should be working on or that you should change. And when they come back to me in a month or two and they're like, hey, nothing changed, nothing you told me worked, I'm gonna say, you know, here's what I told you to change and I came back to your store and you haven't changed anything. In fact, you made it worse. And so I pull that up. Or in the reverse, somebody comes to me and goes, man, I went from a thousand a month to 3,000 a month. I can't thank you enough. How were you able to do it? And I can pull out that conversation that we had and I can tell them, look, I told you to change all this. You changed it and it helped your store tremendously. Look, I've seen enough stores, two or 3,000 stores by now at least, um, that I can tell you uh, when people make changes, like 90% of the time this change helps. There's always some people that free shipping won't help with or some people that best offer doesn't help with, and those are exceptions. But you know, if I tell 100 people like, you're probably in a good shape, you have all lightweight items and, and free shipping might help you if you add a couple bucks to the price, 90% of those people end up raising their sales and making more money. So it's all averages, it's all a numbers game, there are exceptions, but this is what I do on a daily basis. And so it works, it just, it's proven it works. Um, now, uh, you know, tracking your numbers, this is number eight. This is probably really important. So a lot of people, I see this happen during October, uh, probably every year for the last three years. They wait around to do their accounting or their bookkeeping until October. I can't stress to you guys enough, please don't do that. But if you are that person and you procrastinate it and you're not on Excel, QuickBooks, or GoDaddy, if you haven't tracked it at all, if you're just scribbling notes, or maybe you have some very basic spreadsheets, you need help getting them together, you know, I've got a program for that, it's below as well. Um, but this is the time. If you haven't done it, you have to get your numbers ready. The last thing you want to do is see it turn January 1st, wake up on January 2nd with a hangover, and the first thing you can think about is, um, you know, oh my God, I, I need to file taxes. I have no idea what kind of money I made. Uh, it gets really difficult. It gets really hard, and it's not something you want to do. So for fourth quarter, um, I know you want to focus all your time on listing and selling, and you should but you've also got to focus on getting those numbers in order. So please, please, please consider picking up QuickBooks or GoDaddy or whatever you want to use. I use QuickBooks, you don't have to use whatever, uh, but get something and, uh, and get it together. Uh, number nine is planning ahead for 2020. And I think this is important as uh, December comes. Um, you get an idea of what you've sold, you get an idea of what you may have left in inventory, and you need to plan for that inventory going forward. As part of tracking your numbers, you need to know how much inventory you have left at the end of the year. Uh, when you file your taxes in 2020, the IRS is going to ask you, how much did you have in inventory left over at the end of the year? If you bought 10 items and they were $2 a piece, and that's $20, and you sold five of those items, your cost of goods sold was 10 bucks, five items at two bucks each. That goes into your claim for your taxes because you get to claim your cost of goods sold. Your inventory left over, those other five items, had an inventory cost of $10. They were uh, two bucks each. And so when the IRS uh, you know, presents that question to you and says, you, know, you did $100 in sales, you had $20 cost of goods sold, 
bang, and you also, or $10 cost of goods sold, you also had $10 of inventory, and that's what they wanna know. And so you need to know that. Um, you need to plan for that. You also need to plan for you know what worked during fourth quarter, what sold better, what didn't sell, and what items you're gonna change going forward in January and beyond in 2020. Uh, try to use quarter four as a way to gauge which route and avenue you should go. And so that's number uh, nine for me, uh, is planning. I always plan ahead for the next year. I always plan for tomorrow. I always plan for next week when I'm doing uh, goals and, and to-do lists. Uh, you guys have probably seen that a lot. Uh, the last one is learn as much as you can. And so this goes along with number nine, but number 10 is keep records. Uh, if you buy up a bunch of jeans and you can't sell jeans, maybe jeans isn't what you should be selling. Um, you know, learn from that. Uh, learn as much as you can about what sells uh, outside of your normal niche. Learn about what is selling on different platforms if you change platforms. Take notes, learn, train yourself. Uh, you know, put a little money and in investment in, into new inventory, new merchandise, new categories. Invest in your business, invest in training, invest in me helping you, invest in whatever it is that's going to help you learn something new. Uh, you know, I watched the Netflix documentary uh, uh, Inside Bill Gates' Brain the other night. It's like a three-part uh, documentary. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend it. Check it out. But, um, you know, the one thing that he does is he reads a book a week. He reads 50 or more books every year, which is incredible. Sometimes up to 100 books in a year because he always wants to learn something. He's constantly learning. And there's three reasons why this was amazing uh, that he's always learning is one, it keeps your brain working and functioning, keeps your brain you know, continuously going. Two, you're obviously gonna learn something if you're reading a book about something you didn't know. So you're always gonna be finding out new information and ways to you it, use it. And number three is the only way to win in business, and, and you've heard this a lot, is to be the smartest guy in the room. Well, that will keep you being the smartest person because you're constantly learning more than somebody else. And so those three reasons and those 10 reasons that we just went over and 10 things to do during fourth quarter are so, so important. With that said, I wanna make sure you guys know, if you need help, if you wanna learn a new platform, if you need to get your accounting on track, if you wanna watch the webinars about where to source merchandise without going in those thrift stores, how to find better stuff, or how to even sell items that are on eBay and Amazon without ever buying them, storing them, shipping them, selling them, touching them, returning them, anything without drop shipping, 100% legitimate. This is called affiliate marketing and it's eBay and Amazon's own programs that they offer that you can sign up for. Please consider using one of the links down below. They will help you out. They will get you ready for fourth quarter. And I guarantee you, whatever your best quarter, one, two, or three was before now, I will make sure your fourth quarter is better than all of those quarters combined, uh, unless you've done uh, something amazing during one of those other months or quarters. So with that said, I'll leave you to your fourth quarter. Happy October, everyone. October 1st, 2019. Have a wonderful evening, and I will see you guys next time.